We have rock and roll. It's a versatile instrument too, because the public loved this first album of standards so much that he's recorded another, and great it is as well. Here, singing the title song from the album. Welcome, please, Rod Stewart. <laughs> This day and age we're living in Gives cause for apprehension With speed and new invention And things like third dimension Yet we get a trifle weary With Mr. Einstein's theory So we must get down to earth at times Relax, relieve the tension And no matter what the progress or what may yet be proved The simple facts of life are such They cannot be removed You must remember this A kiss is still a kiss A sigh is still a sigh The fundamental things apply as time They still say I love you On that you can't rely No matter what the future brings As time goes by Moonlight and love songs Never out of date Hearts full of passion Jealousy and hate Same old story, a fight for love and glory, a case of do or die. The world will always welcome lovers as time. My treasure. Oh, God. Oh, we're all so. Oh, we're not getting any shaken. younger, are we? I don't know. I think we're getting older and better, actually. Do you think so, Michael? Yeah. I think so the sweet. voice is good. He's still the best, isn't he? Isn't yeah, he no. Best? He's just, yeah, yeah. He is the best. Yeah. Yeah. You've not been out with Meg Ryan, have you? <laughs> <laughs> 
Jesus, what a way to start off a programme. No, I just wondered. No, well, no, if I had, I wouldn't tell you. No, but uh, I just want to know if you did what you talked about. She, she, had, a, she had a moment, did she? She had a moment, love. Yes, yeah, she had a moment. <laughs> but I, I think that this, this record is better than the first one of standards. You I think so? Yeah, oh, I do. Thanks. I think that uh, you're, you're singing really well. You obviously love singing them. Oh, they're, they're so dear to my heart. I mean, they, they've been the backdrop of my life, really. I mean, you know, yeah. being my age now, 58, <laughs> they, my parents played them, so I'm quite familiar with them. But it's, it's very strange that a lot of them sort of entered the subconscious without me knowing about it. I, I just don't know how I know the lyrics, you know. It's, yes. When yeah. I go to record them, I seem to know them so well. Yeah. Now, what about the musical, too? This has been a momentous week for you in more than one way. It's like mm -hmm. the record come out, and then the musical as well. Now, not many people have a musical done about them. Oh, nice it's tonight, it's cool. amazing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, I won't go into the story, but it's 20 of, uh, 20 of the best songs I've ever recorded. And a musical that's got a great plot, a uh, great story, and it's, it's a tear jerky, it'll make you smile, it'll make you feel sexy. It's wonderful. And I do recommend it. everybody goes and sees it. <laughs> 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 Any tickets still available? Oh, I do. They're all sold out. Like You've got a couple of words. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had yeah. seen it, didn't you? I did, I did. Yes, I did. You enjoyed it? I was sitting quite near Rod, and there were more references to his genitalia during the night oh, really? on stage than it quite gave me, made me comfortable with you. <laughs> so close by. <laughs> I thought... It's a bit saucy, is it? It's very saucy. Yeah, it's... A, it's a little touch of the Benny Hills about it, but it's it's good <laughs> British humour. Yeah, it's you know. Ben Elton, right? It's Ben Elton. Ben, yeah. Yeah. ben and his knob jokes. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> knob <laughs> jokes. Those knob yeah, jokes. Absolutely. We actually took out the one knob joke because the guy yeah. in the play comes from Detroit and he's American. It doesn't sound right when you hear nab. No. So <laughs> 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 yeah, well, we'll cut that later. <laughs> Did you, when you first started out 40 years ago, and that's how long the career's been so yeah. far, you can't have imagined that somebody mm -hmm. one day would write a, a musical about you? No, I mean, furthest thing from the truth, I thought, you know, when I came into the business, if it lasts two years, I'd be lucky, or even two months. I just wanted to have a sports car, an Austin Healy Sprite to pull the birds in. <laughs> That's all I wanted, and I thought, then I'll be happy. But here we are. I should say, 40 years later, I'm very, very lucky. <laughs> very lucky. And is it true also that, that in those early days when you were performing, that you were so shy that on one occasion or more, maybe, you hid behind speakers? Yeah, when we um, went to America with the Jeff Beck group uh, in 1967, um, because I always wanted to sound black. So going to America, I was very, you know, very shy. There might be a black person in the audience and think me to be phony. So when the first curtain went up, you know, and we started the band side to play, I hid behind the amps and started, you know, you know, <laughs> ain't superstitious, black cat cross my trail. And then big round of applause. Oh, I'll have some of this. Went out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True story. What, was there a point when you were on that, that early stage of your career when you realised you'd arrived, when you knew you'd cracked it? Um, I don't think you ever think you've cracked it because, you know, I've had some really barren years. But I suppose, you know, when Maggie Mae was number one and Every Picture Tells a Story, the album it came from, and number one, both sides of the Atlantic, I thought to myself, ah, oh, this is good. I should put a few shillings in the bank this time. <laughs> I suppose the worst time of your career, of course, was the time when you, you, you had that cancer scare with your throat. Yeah. That must yeah. have been dreadful. I mean, that wasn't too long ago, was it? Uh, what, a year and a half ago, yeah. Yeah. The so, voice completely gone. Couldn't sing I mean, but, but how did it happen? Was it just you woke up one morning and, and, and it wasn't there anymore, or what? Well, the cancer is because I went for a, you know, a scan and they just happened to find it. I go for a yearly scan and they just happened to find a small cancerous growth on the thyroid gland. But I was real lucky, you know, I was in and out of hospital in 24 hours and uh, just dead lucky. But it was scary because they just cut you from here to here. So the voice was completely gone. <laughs> Some people would say, thank goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, how long was it before you could sing again? Um, it took me six or seven or eight months before it? it came back. And there was one point I thought, this is never going to happen, finished. Why? It just wouldn't come back because yeah. you have to... Because the, the muscles have got a memory and they have to be retaught how to sing. So you have to really more or less start from scratch. When, once you've got the voice back, then what kind of voice was it? Was it very weak that you have to then develop It was it? weak, yeah. I mean, it's just like having an operation on your legs. You know, you've got to build the muscles back up, in which I did. Um, but it also, I think, it opened the gate for this album because I can't sing as high as I used to. Ah. I'm a tone lower. So it's changed so, your voice. Yeah, it's made the voice lower and I think more mellow and uh, more sexy and more attractive. <laughs> Can I say that? <laughs> tell us about the leg, though. Oh, yeah, my football days are over. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> no, 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 I've got to have a 
serious knee operation, a complete knee rebuild. It's, uh, it's, you know, I've been playing football since I came out of the womb, so it's, it's finally caught up with me, but um, I should be okay. As long as I can play till I'm 60, I'll be happy. He invented one of the great characters, the football characters, didn't you, the short? Well, Golden Gordon. Golden the Gordon. The ripping you're yarn. Not seeing yeah, yeah. Ripping yarns. You must see this. I'll get you a video of this. It's one of the it's funniest the, things. The ever. great support of all the shorts. Time. It's what's inside them. Oh yes, them. yes, the football <laughs> man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not the shorts. It's what's inside them. The pumping up and down for <laughs> 45 minutes every hour. Mm. Oh, something. <laughs> it was a football player manager just before he went completely <laughs> mad. <laughs> You don't need the shorts. You don't need the shorts. He takes the shorts and throws them away. Wonderful performance by David Leland, our That's film right. director. <clears throat> right. Now, let's come up to date with, uh, with all, all of the <laughs> Rod Stewart. You know. <laughs> now, you've got yourself into a bit of trouble this week. Yeah. By seemingly criticising three of your dearest friends. Well, I just rattled a few cages. You and, did. You know, right. got a sense of humour about <laughs> these well, things. Well, you have, and, and you've never lost your sense of humour. No, and I'm, no. I'm bound to get it back from them three, I'm sure. So, Elton John? What about him? Well, I mean, what do you say about him? Well, I, you know, they always put in the bad bits, you know. Is I actually said some very nice things about all three of them, and especially about Paul. The point I was trying to make is I get so much stick for going out with a woman that's 24 years younger than me, but Paul gets away with it, because he's so Paul-like, you know, and I get all the <laughs> stick. I just didn't think it was fair. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, Michael? Man of principle. So, uh, I think yeah, if you... So Paul well, should I, get I, a bit of stick as well. Yes, yeah, but we still remember the, the, the child and, and say that, uh, congratulations to Paul and Heather on the, the yes, news, on the, the good on news. The, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Well done, Paul. I didn't think you had it in you. No. <laughs> oh, no, no. Do it again, do it again. Oh, dear, I'm having a foul <laughs> time. Now, what about Sharon? Sharon's in good stead. I don't hear from her much now. <coughs> don't you? But you were once best friends with Elton, weren't we you? Were, I mean, we were. We really like, were very really close. close. Yeah. Yeah. He mixes in different circles now, I believe. But we, what went wrong? Was there a row? I've no idea. We just don't contact each other anymore. Ah. It's fair enough. We move on in life. Do, do, you, how, do you regret that? I mean, yeah, because we, we were, as you say, very close together. And uh, we had marvellous bantering moments, you know, just knocking each other and slagging each other off. And I miss that. But... There you are. Life goes on, doesn't it? Going back to that business about, uh, about Paul, I mean, uh, would, would you like an award? Could you see yourself in the palace getting the tap? I'd love an award. I mean, any award. Give me any award. I'll go anywhere for an award. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't realise, actually, that you never had a Grammy. That, that no. Can't be true. Well, that can't be true. It is no, unbelievable. It's, 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 uh, never mind, it'll come, I'm sure. But, I just but, like one. I mean, some people, you know, Sting's got about 28. <laughs> <laughs> so all on his mantelpiece. I haven't, got, I haven't got one to show me kids, you know, when I'm on the wrong side of the grass. But why would that be, though? I mean, it, it's, it's unimaginable, really, when you think of your career. Yeah. And in many ways, there was one newspaper said this week, I mean, you're one of the few genuine rock and rollers left. Ah, oh, Michael, thank you. He's still the best. <laughs> he? He's still the best. You are. I mean, your lifestyle and all that, I mean, you know, you, you don't yeah. change at all. Which brings me to the subject of women. Now, um... <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> now, you're OK. I um, think I'm quite prepared. <laughs> well, I, I just wonder if you kind of update us on the present situation and uh, if it's just specifically about, about the... the uh, <laughs> likelihood of... <laughs> what is this? I don't know what what is that is. you're talking about. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I, I, do, do you think you'll get married again? I'm going to keep that between me and my knee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, never say never. I've got a wonderful girlfriend. I love her dearly. It's, uh, it could happen, yeah. I'm not writing it out of the question. I don't uh, know what she sees in me. I could be quite honest with you. She can get herself <laughs> a nice young lad. <laughs> I, read, I read somewhere again that you once suggested that the, the wedding vow should be, or the licenses, so should be rewritten. Is that like right? a dog's license? Yes. Renew it every year. Every year, yes. <laughs> Is that a good idea? What do you think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? You've been helping you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I dug yourself in that. I take it you'll be, you'll be an ironic when you said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was being yes, facetious. Being facetious, all oh, right. But. Yeah, but, but... Oh, what? Yes, yeah, sorry, but, <laughs> but I think the whole monogamy thing is a bit... We, we all live so long now. I mean, yeah. look at us. <laughs> yes, the tablets. We go on forever. Yeah. My grandmother used to say, you've got to get used to the fact that your children will marry at least three times because their life changes and you yeah. do change, she said. 
<laughs> so you're, okay. you're, you're thinking that so every so often we should have an option, a vote on it, should we? But you never get consent. You never get both partners agreeing. Well, you might do, but very rarely. I mean, for instance, I mean your example. I mean, uh, when Rachel left you, I mean that was that, that hurt you terribly, didn't it? Yeah, you, yeah. And she'd have said to you, well, "Let's partner." You'd have said, "No, wouldn't you?" Yeah, probably. You know, that was my mistake. I married her when she was 21. That was a terrible mistake to make. I mean, anybody out there that's my age thinking of marrying a girl that's 21. Think twice about it because they haven't lived. You know, they've got their whole lives before them. Then they get to 30. Women change at 30, don't they? Mm -hmm. That's when they change. That's when they want to settle down. 31, 32. Which brings me nicely to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm digging my own grave. Too much. It's freezing nicely to what? So, what else should we talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean would, uh, you, have you considered, I mean, uh, Penn's a young, young girl and would we want children. Have you considered children? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I've got to be really careful what I say now. I, I, it's not out of the question, Michael. I no. love children and no. I've still got plenty of uh, lead in the old uh, pencil. The, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the old biological <laughs> clock is still ticking, yep. is it? <laughs> uh, it's, I, once You're again, never say never. You get excited again. <laughs> <laughs> Play more songs in your old violin. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, what about what about the, the the kids that you've got? I mean, nowadays you're just now you're 58 now. I mean, although you you still live a, a fairly exotic lifestyle. I mean, those mad days, the the drugs, the booze, and all that, they're gone now. Only weekends. Only weekends. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But do, do you actually try to tell them about? Because they're bound to say, Dad, it's all right, you're saying this about drugs and booze, but you did all oh, that. Oh, that's, that's always a difficult it one. It is a problem, you know, isn't it? it really is. Yeah. But, you know, I say to them, you know, I've lived my life. You know, you can't start out at 16 doing drugs and drinking every night of the week. When I was just 16, I used to get drunk Friday and Saturday night, and throughout the week I had to work and I'd stay sober and behave myself. You know, the kids nowadays, they, they want it all the time, as much as they can. So this is what I try and tell them. And, Especially my son, who's, who's had lots of problems, yes. you know, he's cleaned himself up Isn't remarkably good? well. But it's always, it's always a problem. You did it, Dad. You yeah. did it. Yeah. But the problem is, of course, that what you can't tell your kids and what they can't imagine is the difference between where you came from and where mm. they come from. Oh, absolutely. Big difference. I mean, you think about, you know, you're digging graves when you were a kid, for God's yeah. sake. You know, you were just yeah. you were scrabbling around trying to earn a living. Yeah. They've never had that problem at no, all, have they? they? That's the good thing about, you know, if you come from a... Uh, poor background, I would say relatively poor, you know, working class background like <coughs> I have, you see both sides of the fence. Yeah. It's wonderful to have done that, but then to make enormous amounts of money and live, you know, wonderfully well. Yes. They would never have known what that's all about. They just yeah. know what it's like to be privileged. Well, all the best. I mean, it's, oh, it's, a, it's a lovely album. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank it's you. gorgeous time goes by. And I think you're going to sing another song from it. Now. I certainly will. It's yes. a lovely Rodgers and Hart number. Isn't yes, it? it's it called. Uh, I dedicated this to Tony Blair a couple of weeks ago. He had a dodgy ticker. What's it called now? My heart stood still. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Rod Stewart. Okay, okay Rod, thank you. My thanks to Luciano Pavarotti, to Rod Stewart, Michael Pellin and Emma Thompson. We'll be back in two weeks' time when my guests will be Dame Judy Dench, Peter Kay, Charlotte Ullenbrook, Will Young and Claire Teal. Uh, this lovely song from Rod Stewart's new album should send you to bed very happy. If it doesn't, then nothing will. From all of us here, a very good night. Good night. Sweethearts I met in school, all indiscreet hearts seemed romantic fools. A house in Iceland was my heart's domain. I saw your eyes, now castles rise in Spain. I took Hands told me 
Yeah.